Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father God, have your way in this place, God. Have your way, Father God. Holy Spirit, activate. Hallelujah, Jesus. He God, I thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He God, Father God, for you said that we have already crossed over, Father God. That we are taking what you have already given us, Father God. Now we are possessing in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, I thank you that we are now into our land. We are now into our land, Father God. And we are utterly destroying, Father God. Utterly destroying, Father God. Everything that is not of you, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, he go to the Lord. Father God, for we shall not leave any remaining in the mighty name of Jesus. We are buying cycles up right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I come against the, the round and round we go in the mighty name of Jesus. We shall not continue to go around the mountain in the mighty name of Jesus. Joseph doing what they were supposed to 
do, they allowed a whole community, a whole community of Hittites to be born. So it's almost close to safe to say that the Hittite post to never ever even exist. Those fears, traumas, um, those phobias, everything that that Hittite spirit then with those were even supposed to exist. But only because Joseph decided not to the child of Joseph decided not to do what they were supposed to do. They let a whole community be be built. Hmm. 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 So that's why God said, I, I never gave y'all the spirit of fear. Because mm -hmm. we wasn't supposed to be here in the first place. Yes. Yes. You never were supposed to have that in the first place. Mm -hmm. Hmm. It's crazy. Exactly. Manasseh. So we in verse 27 now. So the top of Manasseh. The Canaanites determined not to leave, so they became slaves. Okay. So you have the Canaanites, they say, we're not leaving, but we'll serve you. We'll, we'll be slaves to you. I, I have a problem with that. Yeah. Let me tell you why I have a problem with a slave. Okay? And it's crazy because we as Christians might think, okay, yeah, we conquered it. We have control over them. This is what we do. We tell them what to do. We tell them where to live. We give them what rights that they have. But let's think about those old-time movies, those slavery movies, right? Mm -hmm. So they're doing what, what masters say. Slaving at what master say, but what do slaves have access to? No. Your land. They're, they're yeah. tending to your land. Yeah. 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 Slaves know more about your land than you know about your own land. Yeah. They know about your soil more than you know about your soil. Yeah, that's right. They have access to your harvest because yeah. they're harvesting up for you. Yeah. Amen. They probably to stash some away for them and give you what whatever they want you to have. They have rights to literally, well not rights, but they have access to everything. Yes. Yes. So it just kind of bothers me because I'm like, why do we want slaves, or why do we want the things that are here to kill us, to destroy us? Mm -hmm. All those ice, they're here to kill us, destroy us. Right. They don't want us to be here. Right. We came and took over their land. Mm -hmm. They don't want us to be there. Yeah. So what do slaves do? They hide, they go into their homes, they find ways to manipulate, strategize, to get their land back, or to get free. And sometimes when they get free, what do you want to come back and do? Kill you to get their land back. So I have a problem with trying to obtain something because you, you think you have control over it, but you don't. Because at the end of the day, they are manipulating, scheming up a way or whatever to take back what's theirs. Mm -hmm. So why do we want to sit here and baby up something or try to have control of something that's here to kill us? Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Amen. Come on. Amen. Why? Why do we do that? Mm -hmm. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Something to think about. So then we have to try to be Euphrem, verse 29. The Canaanites will, again, became slaves. The Bulim. Canaanites developed, became slaves again. So we got three tribes where they want to be slaves. They allowed the slaves to be there in their land. When God said, I, don't, I didn't tell you for them to be slaves. I didn't tell them to serve you. Mm -hmm. I told you to utterly destroy it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay? So then we have Asher. Asher moved among the land where the Canaanites controlled the land. Now, hmm. So the Bible says specifically, now let's go to 31 because I want y'all to read this for yourselves. It says, the tribe of Asher failed to drive out the residents of Akko, Sidon, Ahab, Alab, Aziah, Helba, Ephik, and Reho. Instead, the people of Asher moved in among the Canaanites who controlled the land, for they failed to drive them out. So we have, okay, first, you know, they didn't drive them out. And then we have, then the Canaanites became slaves. And now we have the Canaanites controlling the land. So y'all see how this is going down? Mm -hmm. Slowly but surely. Mm -hmm. How the tribes became weak. Mm -hmm. They gave up. Mm -hmm. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. So... And then to y'all, if I, I'm messing up these names, but Lord Jesus. And then, the, and then verse 33 is 
Naphtali. 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 Okay. And they moved amongst the land where the Canaanites controlled the land there as well. Hmm. Okay. And then let's go to verse 34. Okay. As for the tribe of Dan, the Amorites forced them back into the hill country and would not let them come down into the plains. So now we have them as slaves. Yeah, they then they controlled the land, and then they only said, "You, y'all ain't come up in here. This is our stuff." They forced up into the mountains. Mm -hmm. How does that work? <laughs> How does that work when God gives us strict instructions on what to do, mm -hmm. but we don't utterly destroy? We want to keep them as slaves. So just what I said. Now those slaves made up a master plan to manipulate. Now they control the land, and now they saying, "Y'all not even welcome." Go back. Remember where you came from? Hmm. Wow. Hmm. How does that work? How does that work? Amen. How does that work? So y'all see exactly how the tribe slowly but surely went down cycles. Right. Cycles. Hmm. Not ugly, not doing that one thing that God said. God said, if we go back to Deuteronomy and 7, what um Pastor been talking about for a while. Deuteronomy 7, I'm just going to quick read it. When the Lord your God brings you into the land you are about to enter and occupy, he will clear many nations ahead of you. The Hittites, Gershites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. These seven nations are greater and more numerous than you. When the Lord your God hands these nations over to you and you conquer them, you must completely destroy them Make no treaties with them and show them no mercy. You must not intermarry with them. Do not let your daughters and sons marry their sons and daughters, for they will lead your children away from me to worship other gods. So God gave strict instructions, right? I don't think he left nothing out. No, no don't have no covenant with them. Don't say hey to them. Don't say bye to them. Just tell them that just kill them. That's right. You don't need no conversations. Mm -hmm. Just bye. Kill them. If you want to kill somebody, why don't you have to touch them? What's the point? I don't get on negotiations, no, 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 nothing. And that's exactly where a couple of them, let me see, Manasseh, um, Zebulun, um, Asher came into agreement with because they said, okay, we're, we're here to kill you, basically, but then that's when those negotiations came in. Well, hold on now, we'll serve you at least, but don't kill us. Hmm. Okay, okay. So we're going to move on to chapter 2. I don't want to dwell there much because Pastor dwelt there a lot. But it's so much in there. It's so yeah. much in there how the Israelites just sat here and completely did not believe in what God said. Or if they even did, but wasn't strong and confident. But I'm so happy that Pastor put those two words in our Jubilee strength and confidence to do exactly what you need to do. Because if they were strong and they had confidence, they would have early been destroyed. So let's go to verse to chapter two. Judges. Yes, Judges chapter two. So the angel of the Lord went up from Gilgal to Boca and said to the Israelites, I brought you out of Egypt into this land that I swore to give your ancestors. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. Now I'm reading out of the NLT, but I don't know what other versions say. Um, but, but verse two says, for your part. I want everyone to Underline, squiggle it, highlight it, whatever you need to do. Where it says, for your part, you were not to make any covenants with the people living in this land. Instead, you were to destroy their altars, but you disobeyed my command. Why did you do this? So now I declare that I will no longer drop out the people living in your land. They will be thorns in your side, and your God will be constant temptation to you. So why do we feel like that God tells us these great promises on what he's going to do? We either hear him say it because we have a great relationship with him, so we hear him. Wow. We get prophesied to all these things, and we're like, yes, God is promising me this, 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 this. I'm expecting this, 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 but we don't do our part. Yeah, that's right. It's real. It clearly says here in verse 2, for your part, for your part. So God said, I'm going to give you the house. That's what you want. Right. I want you to have the biggest house on the block. You can have whatever you want. Mm -hmm. But you got to put in the application. Yeah. Yeah. You got to get your credit together. Right. You got to do this. Like for much. What's the scripture? The moon much is given, much is much required. required. Amen. Amen. All they had to do, God said, I'm giving you this land. It's already yours. It's yours. 
the soil is rich, everything's looking good, the, the rivers are flowing, the land is landing. Come on now. And then, but y'all have one thing was to not make covenants and to utterly uh, destroy. Amen. But they didn't do their part. So we have to get out of our head. Oh, mir and this is what where people mess up. Miracle signs and wonders. Yes, God. God is going to give me a breakthrough. But you can't not do nothing. Amen. 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 Faith without works is dead. Yeah. So how are you supposed to have all this faith that you're going to get something that you ain't going to yeah. How does that work? Don't oh, that's scripture. I didn't make that up. No, that's scripture. So that's something that we have to do. We have to do our part. Our part. God has given us with the strength and confidence to do whatever he needs us to do. He's given us his grace. The ability to do the assignment. What's our problem? Are we operating in the spirit of fear? The fear, this Hittite spirit that wasn't even supposed to be here in the first place? Something that we allow to happen? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Come on. Hmm. Okay. So, when the angel of the Lord finished speaking to all the Israelites, the people wept loudly. So they called the place Bochum, which means weeping, and they offered sacrifices there to the Lord. Verse 6. After Joshua sent the people away, each of the tribes left to take possession of the land allotted to them, and the Israelites served the Lord throughout. The lifetime of Joshua and the leaders who outlived them. Those who had seen all the great things the Lord had done for Israel. Joshua, son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died at the age of 110. They buried him in the land he had been allocated, Timnath, Sarah, in the hill country of Euphraim, north of Mount Gosh. So, verse 10. After that generation died, another generation grew up who did not acknowledge the Lord or remember the mighty things he had done for Israel. The Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight and served the images of Baal. They abandoned the Lord, the God of their ancestors, who had brought them out of Egypt. They went after other gods, worshiping the gods of people around them. Now, I'm going to stop right there. Now, does anybody, because y'all know throughout the whole entire Bible, all you hear mainly is Baal and the Oxford Pope. Does anybody know what those two gods represent, those two idols represent? The, so you have the idol of Baal. Does anybody know what, what that idol represented, why they prayed to Baal? I'm saying, okay. So Baal means storm and rain. Which means that idol had the control of the agriculture, of their land, of the weather, to make sure that they are they get much harvest. And you know, so that's how they became rich and full. That's how they ate. Okay. That's how they survived. Okay. So they served that idol because this is how we live. Okay? And then you have the ice cream pole. She's the idol of love, fertility, yeah. war. So, you know, so you got to survive, and then you want to be able to produce, you, you, you want to be in love, you want to do all these things. So that's crazy how these two idols were like the biggest ones in the Bible almost. Okay? So I was wondering, like, why are they so infatuated by these idols, right? But see, it, and it said that they abandoned the Lord, the God of their ancestors, who brought them out of Egypt. They went after other gods, worshiping the gods of people around them. So why does it seem like, and I'm going to stop there, why does it seem like that when we feel like we're praying, we don't hear God, or whatever the case is, things are not going the way we think they should go, or whatever the case is, so now we get back into our mindset of how we think things should go. We, we figuring things out because we're looking at the world. We're looking at what's trending, what's popular. Right. What is everyone else doing that I need to go into this way? Right. Instead of us seeking God like the Israels failed to do, right. instead of, okay, God, what do you have us to do here? What's the plan? Right. What's going on? They say, you know what? The world is doing this. Mm -hmm. They're doing this. Mm -hmm. This is trending. Yeah. I'm going to do this. 
I'm going to do this, so this is, so this is just what we're going to do. Mm-hmm. So they forgot all about God. That's right. Yeah. They forgot, and this is a cycle that the Israelites did. Yes, it is. Pretty much the whole Bible. <laughs> right. They forgot God. Mm-hmm. As soon as they got into uh, oppression, oh God, I'm sorry, help us, and then got right back into it again. So we have to get out of this thing of, uh, and, and let me tell y'all this. So when they worshiped Baal and the Ashraf pole, of course they were sinning. Right. Of course, as we know that. Amen. I would think you don't serve no other God. That's right. right. Him. Amen. He's the only. Yeah. How you don't serve a, a, a idol of agriculture, of this <laughs> God, of this, and this, of this. We can serve one, one. the almighty Amen. Yahweh, Amen. who can, all of it. I'm, 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 I'm baffled. But okay. All right. <laughs> okay. All right, God. So, so back to verse 12. They, and they anchored the Lord. They abandoned the Lord to serve Baal and the images of Ashraf. This made the Lord burn with anger against Israel. So he handed them over to the raiders who stole their possessions. He turned them over to their enemies all around, and they were no longer able to resist them. 15. Every time Israel went out to battle, the Lord fought against them, calling them to be defeated, just as he had warned, and the people were in great distress. So there are cycles that we are in. We need to get out of So one, God, you know, this is what I want to do. God, okay, and right now, as y'all know, we are in a grace of entrepreneurship. Yes. We're in a big, huge grace of entrepreneurship. Not just, just the shepherds of this house, but everyone attached to Dreaming Ministry. Yes. We are in a huge grace of entrepreneurship. Okay? So Apostle came up here and he said, right now, before y'all start anything, before y'all think y'all know what y'all brand is, take the kids on. Yes. Take it to the place of prayer. Yes. Seek God. Seek God. But then, what if, okay, you do seek God and God will give you the answer you want to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's right. So now we get into our head, hey, about the devil. Yeah. This is my dream. This is what I'm supposed to be on. Sometimes our plans ain't like God's plans. That's right. Yeah. So, okay, all right, you know, ain't nothing about the devil. The God ain't going to tell me not to have this business. This is my dream. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. This, 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 this. So now we're not, all right, God, so... What am I supposed to do? If you say this ain't it, then, then, then where is your grace? Mm-hmm. Where is my assignment? Amen. Mm-hmm. What am I supposed to be doing? Mm-hmm. But no, we want, uh uh-uh, uh, that, that is the devil. <laughs> so I'm going to do this. Uh-huh. So now we're out of grace, we're out of the assignment, we're out of God's will, yes. just like them, since they, okay, they, they died, the world is doing this, so I'm going to do what the world do. Basically, we're trying to see, and people will tell you all the time, People start this business, start this business, start this business. Yeah. And God's like, I'm not there. Right. Amen. I don't care if that industry is lucrative right now. That's yeah. not where I want you at. That's right. Amen. I don't care what you want to do. That's right. But that's not where I'm at. Amen. So we have to learn that we have to get into God's grace, his assignment. But once we don't, we're sinning. That's right. And then we get to this thing of, okay, why is it not working? Yep. This is my dream. This is my gift. This is my talent. Why isn't this working for me? Right. Why is it struggle after struggle after struggle after struggle? I can't make no money. My debts are bigger than my profits. Like, I, I, God, it's not making. I, I, it's, it's not the adding and adding and nothing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you wonder why sometimes you're stuck there because you're not supposed to be doing it. Yeah. That's right. You're not supposed to be doing it. Because you want to get into your own mindset. What you think you're supposed to be doing instead of going to kid drawing. Mm-hmm. Or if you went to kid drawing and you heard what God said, but then you say, that's the devil. Mm-hmm. Hmm? <laughs> hmm? Yeah. So we know that the start of the cycle is in our own mind, trying to figure things out, uh-huh. not taking it to God, mm-hmm. not keep seeking God first. Mm-hmm. So we do what we want to do. And then we get into this other point of, okay, it's not working. So now you're in oppression. Mm-hmm. Now you're struggling. Yeah, exactly. Now the math ain't math. Mm-hmm. Now you're stressed. Mm-hmm. Now you're 
sometimes we wonder why you can't pay bills. Or all these other things that could happen. It's right here in the word. They serve Baal. They got into oppression. Okay? And I'm going to stick to this thing. I'm going to parallel it with the grace that we have in this ministry right now, which is the entrepreneurship. It's not uh, just something to do with Pastor Brown. Everybody in this church front line does and make you present what it, what you supposed to be doing. Amen. And it's not by coincidence that 11 o'clock service, apostles say, hey, wait a minute. That's that right. was beautiful what y'all did, but take the kid on. That's right. Make sure that's from God. Because once you get into a struggle or something, then you like, no, 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 no. But did you see God first? That's right. Amen. Amen. Okay? Amen. All right, so let's go to verse 16. Then the Lord raised up judges to rescue the Israelites from their attackers. Yet Israel did not listen to, 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 oh, excuse me, to the judges, but prostituted themselves by worshiping other gods. How quickly they turned away from the path of their ancestors who had walked in obedience to the Lord's commands. Whenever the Lord raised up a judge over Israel, he was that he was that judge and rescued the people from their enemies throughout the judge's lifetime. For the Lord took pity on his people who were burned by oppression and suffering. I'm going to stop there. So, okay, we see how the sin came. We don't believe. We, we blame it on the devil when it don't match our plans. <laughs> Then we we struggling, we oppressing. Mm -hmm. But then the Israelites always got into a place of repentance. Mm -hmm. They they always found their, their way of okay, okay, you know, God, we sorry. <laughs> we sorry, we got distracted. The world was doing this, and we just went into, oh, we sorry. So God brings that deliverer, that that judge that comes in and deliver us out of this. Right. Okay, you, you repent. That's all I need you to do. I need you to do it in the spirit and the truth, though. Don't just do it because you something ain't right. right. And as soon as I give you some grace, then you want to go back no, to what you were doing, that's which right. doesn't work. That's right. But so we come into a place of God. I'm sorry. I, where where I'm at? You know, I went to my own mind. I went to my own plan. I went to something to that. But okay, okay, God, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. And then the judge comes. So God's like, all right, I got you. You, re you repented. You humbled yourself. No problem. Now, this is what I need you to do. So God gives them a peace. Mm -hmm. Give us a peace. Amen. It's like, okay, God. And that's exactly the cycle yeah. of the Israelites, mm -hmm. of where we at in life. <laughs> yeah. When it comes to, in our own way, mm -hmm. we stress, we struggle, we oppress it. We don't know. It be coming or going. The ad ain't adding. The bills is too much. Mm -hmm. And then we come to a place of, okay, God. All right. All right, God. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. I was in my own way. I surrender it. I die to my flesh. I die to my own mindset. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we get to a place of deliverance. Okay, I got you. You humble yourself. You repent it. Now I can move you where I want you to be at. Amen. So then things become easy. Things become, you know, now we're in God's rest. Not everything is flowing because God has given us peace. Yes. But then why all of a sudden as soon as we get that peace? Mm -hmm. Or as soon as we get that uh we're feeling good about ourselves. <laughs> we done got a little confidence. Yeah. We done, you know, yeah. got a little big head yeah. and we go right back to our own mindsets. That's right. That brings us yeah. right back into right. another cycle. That's right. That's that sermon. Are we not tired of, of the cycle? You see the man? Are we not tired of that? Come on, come on. Are we not tired? And I'm so excited that Pastor Nino wants to talk about the whole book of Judges. I don't know if anyone read the whole book, but the book of Judges is crazy. It's a freaking massacre story. I mean, <laughs> they were not playing. The judges were definitely judging. But it's it, it, Oh, I, I don't want to go. I don't want to up. Uh, you know, like do, do too much. But y'all, the book of Judges is crazy. Yes, I don't care if you're on the book of Judges for a year. Amen. This is a yeah. good book that's going to free us all. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Especially 
with the grace that we have at Driven right now? Yes. Yes. Amen. Woo! Verse 19. But when the judge died, the people returned their, to their corrupt ways, behaving worse than those who had lived before them. They went after other gods, serving and worshiping them, and they refused to give up their evil practices and stubborn ways. So the Lord burned with anger against Israel. He said, because those people have violated my covenant, which I made with their ancestors and have ignored my commands, I will no longer drop out the nations that Joshua left unconquered when he died. I did this to test Israel to see whether or not they would follow the ways of the Lord as their ancestors did. So just like how Pastor you know, was saying, okay, so there's two ways. We allow the enemy to come. Either God going to bring it, or we're going to open up some kind of entrance for them to come in. So we wonder why sometimes, oh, and I heard so many people say when I was younger, God wouldn't test you. What? I heard that all in the Baptist church. God ain't going to test you. I beg the devil. I beg the devil. Because it says it right here, I left, he, he left them in there to test Israel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So even though, okay, God, I seek, I seek you. This is what I'm supposed to be doing, okay? We're here, we're here, we're here. Don't think it's not going to get rough. Don't think we're not going to have challenges. And it's not to, for us to fail. It's not for us to give up. But it's for us to be tested by God. Let me see. Yes. Let me see how much you trust me. I'm going to put you through a little season of a little, ugh, it's hard. But let me see if you're going to dwell here with me. Or you want to go back in that cycle yeah. mm -hmm. to see mm -hmm. for things to make sense to you. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm trying to make things make sense. Yeah. Yeah. But the apostle said, no, 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 we're not going to do that. No, we're going to make it make spirit. Yeah. <laughs> All right, God. Because at the end of the day, God, if you ask me, God don't work in no sense. Mm -hmm. Hey, don't. A lot of it, because one thing that I learned at right side, one thing I learned in, in that class was that sometimes we have relationship problems, mm -hmm. whether it's from parents, uh, friends, um, molestation, rape. Mm -hmm. So that can hinder our relationships. But God will heal our relationship problems with a relationship Amen. with Amen. him. A relationship that he might have brought somebody to the right side. Mm -hmm. Amen. An elder. Mm -hmm. How he builds things up. And to me, God, if I have a problem with relationships, I don't want to be in no relationships. Leave me alone. Come I'm on. good. Amen. With you and nobody else. Amen. But then God's like, well, that's how you get healed through relationships. Yes. Yes. So to me, it just don't make sense. But it ain't meant to make sense. It's meant to make spirit. Amen. So I know I have to die to myself because you Everything got to make sense. That girl is like spirit. Yeah, I'm talking about me in the church, driven. It got to make sense. The grass ain't grass and the bar grass ain't barn. But I, it just got to make sense to me. And then I wonder why I'm sitting over here like struggling, oppressed. Because I'm trying to make it make sense to Alexa. And um, that's why God said, I don't care nothing about you understanding. You just need to obey. I'm talking about myself. Jesus. I'm talking about myself. But I did this to test Israel to see whether or not they will follow the ways of the Lord. And where else were, were the Israelites tested? Y'all give it to me. Y'all know it. When, what else? Where else were they tested? In the wilderness. See if they don't seek God. Mm -hmm. They don't trust God. Mm -hmm. But what did they do in the wilderness? Complain. Mumble and grumble. Ain't had nothing. Just take me back to Egypt. Yeah. At least we had good fruit. Mm -hmm. I don't know what this man or nonsense. At least we had some mango, some cherries, some bananas. <laughs> you know, at least we ate good. At least I had a house. Now I'm sitting over here in the desert. Like, what is this? Come on, so God go test us. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So as we have this big grace, mm -hmm. this beautiful grace that God has given, driven ministry, this entrepreneurship grace, mm -hmm. we have 
spirits that we are taking it to one Kidron, okay? For one, not getting in our head about it. Because we some overthinkers. We like to overthink. We like to have lists. Everything has to make sense. God's not overthinking it. God says, hey, this is what I need you to do. Just, just, just do. Just, just do. Amen. Just imagine how life would be so much easier if we just do. Amen. Yes. Amen. If we just do. Amen. It reminds me of the story of the priest and Zacharias. Okay, Elizabeth, she would have a baby. What? She old? I mean, it don't make sense. God, it don't make sense. She's old, her womb, so what did the angel have to do? Me them. Because you're going to choke yeah. your blessing. Yeah. You're going to mess everything up because you're a priest and you know that. Mm -hmm. And then Mary, what does she do? Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Yeah. I'm going to be pregnant. Great, great, great. <laughs> you know? Amen. So, y'all, we have to get to a point where we are, for one, seeking God. Taking it to Kidron. Taking it to Kidron. Um, K I D R O N. Yeah. K I D R O N. That's it. And I believe that was the valley where Jesus went before he got crucified. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. So, because um, remember, he was he, he was going hard. God, you sure I need to die? You sure? He was sweating blood. That's a hard cry. That's a hard prayer. We need to go to a, a major. Y'all, we have such a grace yes. here at Driven. Yes. Literally, if you miss this grace, it's so you. Yes. You can't blame the pastors. Amen. You can't blame God. Because what did it say in, in chapter 2, verse, verse 2? For your part. You have to do your part. Amen. My part is kindred. Amen. That's one of your part. You got to take that first. And then as soon as you get those strict instructions, just do. Just do. Amen. Just do. Just do. Just do. Mm -hmm. God may say, oh, okay, take $500 to this place, open up your business account, make your first purchase. Amen. Um, where that $500 come from? Wow. Y'all know how we get there and buy $500. I'm willing to. Where that come from? Got that. That don't make sense. Who's talking about? So y'all see how we be like, oh my God, is it going to be show? I don't know. You know what? That was the devil. <laughs> God ain't going to tell me to go into my savings. God and God know what my savings is for. God, you know I got $500. What am I supposed to get my $100 from? You got me to understand. Just you go do. You might be walking to your place and see an envelope. I don't know. I don't know. Amen. I don't know.
our head. It's not working, so now we're oppressed. Then we repent. God deliver us where we're supposed to be. Then we get into his peace. But then we get the big head. I mean, we know it all. Go right back to it. So we have to mention that we see God in everything. Amen. Everything. Amen. Not looking around the world trying to see, well, God, you know, I don't see where the business that you gave me or you told me to do is supposed to work because uh, I did studies and the studies say this is not a lucrative business right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Y'all know how we are. Yeah. It's not lucrative. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's not, don't look around the world. Mm -hmm. Don't be conformed to the world. We the salt, we, we the light. So we don't follow the things of this world. So stop looking to the right to the left, see what everybody else going with God. They said that this is the way to go. Big go and invest. I need to be doing this. God said, this is where I want you to be at. So stop looking over there. Because they're so busy and trying to do what we're doing, but looking over there, that we're going to fail. So we have to not worry about what the world is doing, what's going on, what's trending, what we we are the trending. Come on, we are what's popping. Amen. That's it. We are the one that the salt, and you ain't got no salt, bro. You tasteless. What's going on? Now? No if you ain't got no light, you step in the darkness. Like we are the salt and the light. We the popping ones. We what's trending. Yeah. Right. So we gotta stop looking around us, trying to think. Okay, well this is the flow. No, I am the flow. Thank you, I thank you, I thank you, Father God, for having your way, having your 
go away, Father God, that we are no longer fearful, Father God. We are no longer allowing the Lord to shrink to cause us to be delayed, our blessings to be hindered right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, we are not going through cycles anymore. We are no longer going through cycles in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. So you said, seek ye first the kingdom of God, Father God. And his righteousness and all else shall be added, Father God. So we take the grace, Father God. We take everything that we want, Father God, to his heart, Father God. To hear you, Father God. To dwell with you, Father God. To intercede there, Father God. That our eyes shall be open. Our ears shall be open. All of our senses shall be open. That we hear from you, Father God. That we see you, Father God. And we shall move in the warp speed that you have already put us through, Father God. To do what you have us to do. We are not conforming to this world. We are not looking to the, to the left, to the right. To the front, to the back of us, trying to figure out what the world is doing, Father God. Because the grace is here in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, the grace is here, and we shall move in what you have called us to do in the mighty name of Jesus. We are aligned. We are aligned, Father God. We are in your will, Father God. Keep the Lord of us. Father God, we are aligned with your will, Father God. We are dying daily, Father God, that we shall hear you, that we shall know. Father God, 